Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This is the Norand Mono, which is a two VCO mono synth with an integrated sequencer. And that's not a genre of synths that I am unfamiliar with, and you might be the same. Um, I think if I looked in my cupboard, I can probably find like five, including this one that I own, the five synths that we can call two VCO mono synths with an integrated sequencer. So for me to uh, make a fuss about one on my channel, it's going to need to do something or offer something that's pretty unique. And the Noren does this. Um, looking at the panel, it looks like a fairly basic architecture. And if you want to use it that way, you absolutely can. It does great 303 stuff if that's what you're into, uh, which you know I am. Uh, but what this offers is something that I think is probably unique in the world of certainly desktop units. And that is that this little synth, despite its diminutive appearance and supposedly limited number of controls, actually offers an LFO and envelope independently for every single knob on the panel, which is bonkers, and allows you to do some Formative and sound design tricks that um, I don't think you can easily do, um, certainly not on an analog synth. And it's that part of this synth that I want to focus on in this video today. This idea of having, I guess, 14, 15 uh, envelopes and like 18 LFOs and what that actually means for making sound and making music. Oh, just in the interest of transparency, uh, Noran did send me this unit to make some videos on, um, but they've had no input and have asked for no input on the videos um, that I make on it. And as uh, with everything I feature on the channel, I just wouldn't feature it on the channel if I didn't think it was interesting and cool and didn't get me excited, which this synth does. So in this video, I really want to focus in on this idea of having this LFO and envelope per knob. Uh, so if you want a more thorough overview of the uh, mono, then uh, Loopop has done a really thorough overview, as you would probably expect. And if you want to hear it in a uh, musical context with more uh, instrumentation, uh, Jeremy at Redmeans Recording did a, a, a pretty good length um, live set, which um, featured the mono as its primary synth voice uh, throughout. And I'll put a link to both of those in the description of this video. Nevertheless, it's probably worth just talking about what the architecture is in general, uh, so that you have a good uh, feel for what we're then going to be modulating. So uh, here's uh, just a sort of an initialized patch. Open the filter more. Um, so um, we have two identical oscillators. Um, there is a frequency knob for each of them, which rather wonderfully on the knob at least steps to semitones. When you uh, modulate it, it's smooth, but in terms of being able to tune to um, oscillators uh, to like intervals, uh, you'll even be able to see as I change the tuning, it highlights the light as it goes. Hopefully that's coming through on the video okay. Um, so you've got uh, a big tune knob and then you've got a detune, which takes you a semitone in either direction, allowing you to detune the oscillators uh, as is your want. The other control here is a wave knob which um, is like uh, uh, giving you various different continuous shapes starting at sine wave, going through triangle, through square and over to a lovely buzzy um, saw. I also love that point between the square and the saw on this thing. Um, perhaps we can modulate that. If only we had an LFO per knob. Oh wait, we do. Uh, that, <laughs> so um, that's basically the uh, oscillator architecture. On oscillator two, if we bring that up, we also have um, FM between uh, oscillator one and oscillator two, so oscillator two as being the carrier. And you'll notice Despite this being analog FM, it is super stable right up until the top where you start getting some K 
chaos. Uh, so these um, oscillators have through zero FM, which means that they, as I say, until you get right to the top, basically will stay in tune you. So you don't get that uh, usual uh, drift off one way or another. Even with linear FM, you still get this sort of um, pitch, or sort of global pitch shift, which you have to account for. You don't get that on this, which is really, really nice. And we also have sync on uh, oscillator two. So oscillator two is synced to oscillator one. So we turn that on. We can get those sync sounds. It sounds a bit weird because um, it's stepped at this point, but we can modulate that smoothly as well. And you can also bring the two in together for different um, textures and the like. So we then have a mixer section. Uh, and what is really important to note on the mono is that the uh, mixer allows you to go way past unity as you go into the filter, allowing you to get crunch on the filter as well. So really, Unity is somewhere around half, and actually if you've got both oscillators on, maybe a little bit below. Um, and as you push it, you can hear, especially if we bring the cutoff down a little bit, you get that blowing out of the bottom end. And then if you start to introduce resonance on the filter, it can get crunchy. So if you don't want that crunch, you want to bring that back a fair bit and then compensate on the master volume. Gain staging on this thing is something that you just have to be careful with. It's one of those with great power comes great responsibility type situations, frankly. So we've kind of already uh, talked about the filter sort of incidentally there. Uh, so the filter has a cutoff, it has a resonance, and then this filter is um, multi-mode uh, and you can blend between uh, low pass in the middle high pass at that end of the colour knob and then band pass in the middle. I do love a band pass, especially if you can drive it. Ah, uh, sorry, no, it's meant to be talking about the NFOs. That's just, I just love it though. Uh, so we also have this follow button here, and if this is turned on, then the um, filter will track the keyboard. And as you can hear there, we can get almost chord tones out of it. Uh, and it does track um, pretty much perfectly. We then have an envelope amount knob here, and this envelope amount knob is going to um, refer to the master envelope, which is our VCA envelope. So that's the last bit we have here, really. We have a VCA envelope, which is standard ADSR. Release goes pretty long. It can also be incredibly snappy um, to the point of it being clicky. You need that. But it's got quite a big range on it. And uh, yeah, if we um, turn up the envelope, envelope, envelope amount on the filter, it's going to be this envelope that it's dealing with. So we can have a type situation if we want. But of course, we don't have to use this envelope amount because we, as I keep saying, have a envelope and LFO per knob. Okay, so we're on an initialized patch, just to open up the filter a little bit. Um, lovely, uh, Just uh, we're just hearing oscillator one, sawtooth wave, great. So the way that the um, envelopes and uh, LFOs per knob works is basically based on the last knob that you touched. Matron. Uh, so uh, if we wanted to apply, uh, say, an envelope to the pitch of oscillator one, um, we could touch the uh, and the uh, frequency knob for that. If you don't want to actually change the um, uh, the parameter as you're um, selecting the knob, you can just hold down function and it doesn't um, move it 
So as soon as you've um, uh, selected a node to work with, you can hopefully see on the camera that it is sort of highlighted. So you can see that that's the uh, knob that you're currently working with. And that'll be the knob that is going to be affected by this uh, X mod and X env section down here. So we've got uh, the LFO or the X mod. It does a little bit more than just LFO, actually. Um, uh, but let's start with the envelope here. So if I want to apply a pitch uh, envelope to this, just turn up the amount. It's bipolar, so we can go down as well. And then we have an attack and decay control for this. So if we wanted to do something a bit... Let me go back to the sine wave there, drive it into the filter a bit. You do have to be careful to make sure that you're not trying to tweak the thing that you've just touched. <laughs> that is something that I keep doing. There we go. So if you want to know if we could get sort of kick drum territory. And the answer is certainly yes. So perhaps this might be a synth that you could turn into a drum machine. Perhaps that's foreshadowing for another video. So one place this is uh, sort of obviously applicable, if we just um, get rid of the... The amount on there is that we can now decouple the filter and the amp envelope. So we're not sat with this sort of 303 limitation where the two have to move together or you have a gate. We can um, have a hybrid of those two things. So perhaps we can set like a longer amp envelope. And if we turn up the envelope amount here, it's going to have to follow that long envelope it also has to have that instant on but if we want to modulate the cutoff separately we can select the cutoff and we can apply an amount to it so now we have separate filter and amp articulation lovely brassy sound the filter on this is it's really nice so you now have a uh, separate articulation over the filter and the amp which uh, immediately opens this thing up um, a lot more from that perspective you also uh, it should be noted have separate articulation in this way over the two oscillator because the mixer is not just a passive mixer it's it's a vca that we can control here so um, perhaps if we can just remove that just for the sake of um, hearing what's going on so here we've got our oscillators tuned uh, differently and perhaps we want this um, fifth above to fade in a little bit after we've started playing the notes we can turn that one down because this is the last knob that we touched we can turn up our amount here fade in over the course of the note instead. Which is a really nice option to have. So one place this could be really fun uh, to apply a separate envelope to something would be maybe the FM amount switch back to sine waves for a second get these in tune there we go uh, maybe we'll just turn down oscillator one just for a second we can hear we've got that lovely fm thing going on there so perhaps having that fm not being uh, modulated so we basically have an analog to op synth so Try a different wave 
shapes. So we've got essentially analog cross mod happening here, which is through zero, and we have a separate uh, envelope for that uh, particular control. And of course we could have separate control for the cutoff as well if we wanted. Uh, Cool, so we've got that short FME attack there, and then a longer uh, sort of standard sound happening at the moment. Perhaps we'll just turn the FM up a little bit, so it's just still a bit of FMness happening there. So this is probably a good opportunity to um, show another feature which is related to the X mod, but is kind of also part of the sequence as well. So I'll just put down like a really basic. And uh, just random notes. <laughs> so we've got just some, just some notes. And at the moment, that FM is obviously happening each time we play a note, as one would probably expect. Uh, but what we can do with our X mod here is if we hold down these two buttons we can start putting down steps on the sequencer which will decouple it from uh, the note on so rather than this envelope triggering each time a note plays it triggers per step on the sequencer and you can do this with pretty much all of them again uh, per knob so if we just wanted that first one to be FME actually selected the right knob. <laughs> that's the, what that's going on there. Uh, here we go. Let's try that again. There we go. Need to make sure you're on the right knob. So now just that first one is uh, playing that uh, envelope, but we don't have to have it on a note on at all, so we can have it in between notes. get these timbral things happening in the sequence and it gets can get really groovy especially when you just kind of catch the tail end of a note there or something like that we've got our filter being separately being triggered as well aren't we And we can do the same with this, but put them on different places. Oops. Which is really really good fun and an incredible way to get more complex sounding sequences even if you're just sticking with the 16 steps and this does um, uh, 68 steps uh, 64 steps in total I think burn into that filter a little bit so yeah uh, we can get to a place where each of the different envelopes on each of the different knobs could be sequenced uh, separately to the notes that are actually playing to get all of these really, really interesting patterns happening. Let's put a bit of reverb on that just for a second. And of course we could have the filter tweaked a little bit by the main envelope as well if we wanted. Still works. Yeah, so 
that's really good fun as well. So we've spoken a lot about the X and there is still one trick I want to come back to it with, but let's talk about the um, X mod instead. So this is where our LFOs plus some other things live. So um, as a basic example, if I wanted to apply a, um, a filter sweep, uh, we could select our cutoff, turn up the amount and... Uh, there's our lovely filter sweep. And by default, this is going to be a free running um, LFO. We'll look at some of the other modes in a second. And we have various different waves by tapping the wave. Make sure we're actually on our filter again. I think that's a sine wave instead. You can hear that's free running as well. Uh, there's our square wave. Got our saw. And if we want it to go the other way, we just invert it. Then we've got sample and hold, uh, random. And this goes really slow at the far end, so if we come back to our... Like, really slow. Get the picture. Uh, and at the high end... We do stop just short of audio rate, but don't worry about that. We'll get back to that. So we can have various different parameters all wiggling around a little bit. So maybe we'll take the filter and the wave shape. And then we'll bring it all slightly to and have oscillator twos oh, gain staging. Have oscillator twos uh, move separately as well. And maybe the filter mode as well. Really slow, perhaps. Let me slow down up. And we can get loads of movement in here across loads of different parameters. They're all out of sync with each other, so you get these constant interactions. Then we have FM between the two to get some grit. Loads of lovely things. Let's just stick some reverb on that. Reverb is the um, Polaro by Digitech. Loads of lovely movement. Gorgeous stuff. So that's free running LFOs. We can also tempo sync them to the sequencer as well. So if I just um, just make a nice sound there. A generally good sound isn't it? anyway um so uh, there is um, a sound for us to start working with and perhaps we want to uh, modulate our cutoff with a tempo synced lfo so we can select the cutoff 
Um, and then if we tap type once, it should see it starts pulsing. And that's going to tell us that the uh, LFO is now tempo synced. And so we can apply you should hear that that's blocking to steps which choose a different wave type and maybe if we just track down uh, some steps. So it's tempo synced, but not to like sixteenths. So we get these nice sort of shifting patterns with our LFO there. filter separate and hold there. Yeah, so we can um, tempo sync them to the sequencer uh, if we want to. So uh, we've seen that we have free running LFOs per knob. We have tempo synced LFOs per knob. The final mode, however, that the XMOD has is probably the most exciting for me, actually. Um, let me show you. So um, if I Let's turn the oscillator to as well, maybe choose some just off triangle waves, something like that. Okay, so um, let's go to the volume of oscillator 2 and um, we'll tap type twice and it's going to go solid and that means that we're in the third mode for our X mod, which is audio rate modulation. So we're now um, uh, going way past LFO place and we're starting to introduce new harmonics and sidebands by modulating things so fast. Now the thing that's really, really important about this, so we're, we're, we're modulating the volume of oscillator to here. The thing that's really, really important about this is that this modulation amount, sorry, modulation rate I should say, is related to the frequency of oscillator 1 and it will track it as you play across the keyboard, which means that we've introduced these new harmonics and they're going to track across the keyboard. And obviously the relationship between the pitch of oscillator 2 uh, and oscillator 1 is going to give us different different things. So if I turn down that amount, you can hear that we're introducing these additional harmonics. And we can adjust what those harmonics are by changing the rate of the LFO, or not LFO anymore the X mod and they're going to track across the keyboard and because we have an X mod per knob essentially we can do this for lots of different controls and have them, um, although they're related to uh, oscillator one's pitch, have them offset by a different amount to get different flavors. So, for example, we can come to our cutoff here and go into audio rate mode. Combine 
that with some envelope amount. Careful with the gain staging if you're modulating lots of things to do with volume. <laughs> Introduce some actual FM between them. Here's one. How cool does it sound when you do audio rate modulation of the resonance of a filter? Really cool, as it turns out. Bit of reverb. Bit more band passy. So you kind of get to this place with all this audio rate modulation and the fact you can layer it up with different amounts um, to, to creating this sort of like, I almost describe it as like analog masquerading as digital. Like you've still got that instability and dirtiness from all the analog stuff going on in here, but it's... sparkly and harmonically rich and different overtones that you can't usually create just with standard analog waveforms without maybe going towards something like wave folding or something. I think this is where some of the really really fantastic aspects of this device really come into place. And there's one more thing we can do to shape this functionality if you like. So I've just, for the sake of clarity, just come back down to a um, initialized patch. So let's go back to maybe doing audio rate modulation of our uh, cutoff. Okay. Tap type twice. Creating a, an extra pitch in there. a bit more to work with. So obviously, a very cool sound. So at the moment, that additional coolness of that sound is static. We've got that additional overtone created by the audio rate modulation of our cutoff, but it's kind of just static. Um, in the sound. So what we can do, if we hold down funk and tap, i make sure we're on our cutoff first, hold down funk and tap, type and wave together. You can see that the amount knob here starts flashing. So what that means now is that the um, X envelope is no longer modulating the cutoff, it's going to be modulating the amount of the X mod for the cutoff. Don't worry. So let's just turn this back down so we come back to our bass sound that we can barely hear because we were adding so much grit with that cutoff. And now if I turn up the amount on uh, the X envelope, this is now modulating this amount for the cutoff. And like, how many analog synths have you heard that do that because this sounds like it's coming out of like a DX7 or something right and of course we can still offset the amount if we just want a little bit of it I mean, this is so far away from what you expect a two oscillator monosynth to sound like. Let's do the same with the resonance, shall we? Let's, let's, so we'll give, find a nice, oh, tap to it, twice. So 
that's creating a load of extra grit at the start there. But perhaps we don't want that grit all the way through, perhaps we just want a really strong attack. So again, we can tap those together, it starts flashing, turn that down. at the front end now and perhaps we could do the ring mod thing with oscillator 2 again so select oscillator 2 double tap type yes and perhaps we want that one to fade in instead so we could again double tap there some effort between the two. <laughs> if you ever wanted your analog monosynth to sound like a sound blaster keyboard, and I do. some reverb <laughs> fantastic and all that while, we're getting all of this, what feels like digital glistening nastiness, but it's still maintaining that sort of inherent analog flavor along with it all. And sure, we can make it do 303 stuff as well. But we're way past that at this point. I think that's rather special because I don't have another analog monosynth that can do that kind of madness, push the sound that far. So um, anyway, um, I hope that was interesting. I think this is a fascinating synth, especially when you get into this audio rate stuff and the independent triggering of the um, the X env stuff outside of um, the note on stuff within the uh, within the sequence. So the sequence has a bunch of other uh, interesting tricks up its sleeve, including um, parameter locking or parameter offset locking, actually, in, in the case of this, which allow you to create really, really complex, interesting, performable sequences. And maybe, just maybe, you can also turn it into a drum machine using some of those features. Perhaps, just maybe, that might be a video that I show off um, in the future. But um, for now, For now, um, uh, I think we will leave the mono to create its interesting sounds. And um, we'll return to it on another day. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time.
<laughs> um, <laughs> until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Um,